Hi, you're tuned in for the Power and Energy News Channel, ESI Africa. For this episode, I am speaking with Wendy Poulton, and she's the Secretary General for SANIA in South Africa. Welcome, Wendy. Thank you. Uh, Wendy, here at Endlet Africa, uh, the conference that's taking place in Cape Town, you spoke on a, uh, a panel that looked at the uncertainty in the market. But let's also look at what, is, what are some of the certainties that are bringing about uh, investment into the energy landscape? Thank you. Um, so what we do when we look at uncertainty is we look at how do you influence it to, to be positive or negative, but we also look and we're tracking like 25 major uncertainties for the energy sector um, as Sanya in the risk report. And we also look at the speed of change and whether things are becoming more certain or more uncertain. So some of the things that are speeding up in terms of the pace of change but becoming much more certain are issues like renewables because we know that the prices are really coming down um, and climate change you know there have been major moves in the um, international negotiations and after Paris what countries were committing to in their NDCs were, was became obvious and so that certainty is becoming you know much stronger um, and so it's really important to try and understand that pace of change but also identify those major uncertainties that are drivers of the ecosystem mm. of the energy sector. And if you can make them more certain, then you, know, you change the whole ecosystem. Right, right. You've been in the energy market for, for quite some time, so you, you know how that, that pace of change has developed. So what do you think has uh, been the, the biggest uh, influencer in speeding up the rate of change within the power and energy market? I would say undoubtedly climate change. Um, you know, it's been on the horizon. I was saying to somebody the other day, I chose my age. I went to the first COP I ever went to was COP6, and we now have COP27 coming up. <laughs> so um, the, it's been slow in the international negotiations to gain traction, but I think um, Paris in 2015 was a watershed mm -hmm. where people committed to joint action and I think that's really pushed it and that's what's pushed renewables which is is changing the you know the energy system right. so I, I think without doubt it's climate change yeah. so um, at the moment we we, we have uncertainties uh, that arrived uh, like COVID-19 uh, there's the tragic war uh, between Russia and, and Ukraine uh, that are influencing markets across the world, even here in South Africa. So what should leadership really be focusing on? I mean, there the, are these uncertainties, but where should they uh, uh, move their focus towards? Yeah, so I think what it means for the, you know, the energy sector is quite unusual in that you of, you're taking long-term decisions and normally quite big ones. You're not talking a $100,000 investment, you're talking billions of dollars of investment. So that is quite um, tricky when you're in a very uncertain environment. So I think what we're starting to see is that lots of players in the energy sectors are taking much smaller incremental decisions so that they give themselves flexibility um, should things change. But I think the Russian uh, war example is a great one of where there was a lot of risk in one particular area and now that that has um, become at risk, so to speak, of getting uh, gas supplies, it's, it's impacted the whole sector, as did COVID. We saw how energy sector demand went right down during COVID, etc. I mean, it's bounced back, but it certainly had a huge impact. So I think the world is getting more used to having those big shocks and thinking a lot more about being resilient mm -hmm. because you can't get rid of them. No one can predict what the next one is going to be. So it's how resilient you can be. Are you thinking about contingencies? Are you thinking about agility and being able to be flexible and not locking yourselves into long-term decisions right. necessarily? It's hard, but and there will obviously still be mistakes, but I think that's where the decision-making and the risk appetite is going. 
So when looking at this uh, resilience that you need to build into the business, uh, what are the opportunities that companies and utilities should be looking at? So I think one of the things is certainly um, we're seeing a lot happening in the South African space is self-generation. So people are taking the energy, and even for residential uh, communities, people are taking their energy decisions into their own hands so that they are resilient to what's happening on the bigger infrastructure um, and the, the electricity system. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is, as I said, taking smaller incremental decisions so you're not exposing yourself to, if you do take a wrong decision or something that's not an optimal decision, you haven't sunk too much into it. So that is also giving people some resilience. And resilience is also not just about bouncing back to where you were, but bouncing back to a new future. So it's making sure that you are strongly promoting innovation within your organizations to look at different ways of doing things. Yeah. Because things are changing so fast, and not just within our sector, but outside our sector as well, that's impacting us. Like the, the transport sector is now um, becoming very tightly interlinked with the energy sector through electric vehicles. So it's really making sure also that you are vigilant, you are scanning your environment all the time, and seeing things early so that you can take proactive um, measures. And in looking at that, uh, we need to absolutely collaborate because you cannot be a business on your own. Looking at all of this uncertainty and potential risk in the market, there needs to be that collaboration. And you were just recently on a panel discussion that looked at that. What was the one key takeaway for you? Um, I think the collaboration aspect came out very strongly in our, in our panel. Um, but it's also not so much collaboration, but integration. Mm -hmm. So I think people need to integrate and see where the different moving parts are. Um, companies obviously still have to be competitive, and so you, can't, you can collaborate up to a point. Um, but I think different kinds of collaboration are emerging. So um, today, energy companies are collaborating very differently with their stakeholders. In the past, you sort of got what they gave you and took it or left it. Um, but today, stakeholders and stakeholder capitalism and stakeholder ecosystems are very, very different. And they have a much stronger power on the utilities or the energy companies of today um, because they can not buy your product or they can have a lot of civil activism around your, your, what you do. So the transparency that we have in the market today is, has caused that to happen. So I think certainly working with your stakeholders a lot more closely and engaging in an integrated way is something that can definitely needs to be done. Wendy, just one last question. And uh, uh, this is about looking at Sanir as, as, as an association. Uh, do you also collaborate then with uh, other international associations to see where they, their focus is and how they see the market uh, moving and what would, uh, what would that collaboration look like? Yeah, we certainly do. Um, we are um, not members of the World Energy Council anymore, but we have still strong ties with them. So we look at what they're doing. We also um, partner with organizations that are based in South Africa, like the Electric Power Research Institute, um, and with other organizations in South Africa. So SANI is an overarching energy organization, but you have the renewables and the wind. and So we've pulled all of those organizations into our risk report, for example, to say, Tell us what it looks like from your perspective. Are we missing something? What are the risks and uncertainties that you see in your particular environment? So we, we do definitely collaborate um, as far and as wide as we can. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Wendy. I think that uh, your association is doing very good work. Thank you so much. <laughs> and thank you for watching. Like, share and subscribe to ESI Africa for more of this type of news.